Inet is foolishly listening to her lol, lol, er, and suing the five individuals and Corporal Gregory who attempted to save Lloyd from her grasp, from her control. Which, frankly, she's the one being controlled right now by a rogue lawyer. In point 41 of this 80-point lawsuit, it states that, in fact, attorney Jenny Consuega of Miami Law Group, PLLC, on June 10th, 2024, filed a petition for adoption information on behalf of the aunt of the child in Lina and Crook's care, seeking an order from this court which would grant petitioner and her undersigned counsel with access to the records and the information otherwise sealed in the above-styled adoption case. Yeah, the ants are going to get the information. And yes, the ants are filing for emergency removal. You're probably thinking the same thing I am. If this is about the five defendants, you've got Deanna, you've got Brett, Therese, you've got Travis, you've got Rex, then why in the world has 40 of the points almost all been about Jeremy Hales, what the Hales? Uh, two of them have been about Corporal Gregory. We've seen very little about Lloyd, even though this whole situation centers around Lloyd, but he has publicly stated the lol er that he can't go or he won't go after Lloyd because he's broke and he now he lives in Massachusetts. Now we bring in new individuals, the ants, the biological ants of the child, the biological ants who actually have custody of siblings of the child, keeping in mind that this child was adopted allegedly by Lynette, even though the only physical documents, legal documents that have ever been seen are guardianship, which she's saying she's had a full on adoption. Um, if that happened, according to this, those documents are sealed, which we have information stating that yes, they are sealed and the ants are attempting to get them unsealed. And the reason behind that is because the biological mother was forced to sign her name. And in the margins, the biological mother states that she did not want to sign this. She was made to sign it under distress. And the biological father never signed anything. So if this becomes unsealed now, you know, this Facebook adoption during COVID, which is the most absurd thing I've ever witnessed or heard of in my life in an adoption realm. Well, the uh, Think Lynette probably tried to sign his name illegally. The more that comes out, the more it seems like she's going to be in trouble. The more she involves herself, the more she can't stop, whether it be stalking somebody, whether it be a cease and desist, whether it be violating civil protection orders, whether it be individuals who are coming alongside of her and telling her, I'm going to get you millions, millions. And yet that individual who claims to practice as a lawyer won't be held accountable for all the countersuits, for all the legal fees, Lynette will. Do you think Lynette's going to be able to keep on keeping on? If more information is found out, more corruption is found, more details of this is actually found. No, they don't want this unsealed at all. Except the biological ants now have the biological mothers and the biological father's signatures to have the adoption records completely and totally unsealed from the court. And that will give them the full investigative measure to see exactly what Lynette did do or didn't do. Now, there's already all kinds of questions surrounding whether this adoption was legal or whether it was not. Everything I have heard personally from the family members and I'm not talking about Lynette or Crook. I'm talking about the biological child's family members points to nothing about this was legitimate. Now, I can't make that decision. You can't make that decision. That'll be for the courts to make a decision on. So, yeah, they filed to have the records unsealed. And now they have the biological parents' signatures to make sure they are 100% unsealed. 
on point 42, you know, let's just, let's, let's camp on point 41 for a minute. Why? The ants aren't a part of this lawsuit. Why? They're not a defendant. Why? I thought this was about damages for a camper being removed from a piece of property. So far, we've heard nothing but anything but damages. Point number 42 on August 8th. And keeping in mind that this lawyer, who's so ridiculous, can't even get his dates or information correct. I mean, he's going to be utterly and tragically destroyed within the court system. Um... Two revisions that I know of so far, because viewers such as you are calling them out on all of the errors. And now you have to go and revise it. So you revise it once and you can't get it right. You have to then go revise it a third time. That would be the third draft, the original revised once, then revised now it's two times. You can't get it on the second time. I mean, come on, there's a problem there. This is the best lawyer I've never had to pay for in my life. Doing everything he can for me and others. On August 8th, 2024, the court entered an order directing the petitioner to provide a written response addressing several of the court's concerns. Now, in this point, number 42, we don't even know what court case we're talking about. Now, we can assume, which we know it's pretty dangerous assuming, that he's discussing the actual case with the biological ants who are trying to get the adoption unsealed. The biological ants, with your help, who have hired a family attorney to get the adoption records unsealed, who has filed for an emergency removal of the child because of things such as I'm going to spank you in your mouth because of such things as you're going to fall and you're going to get a nail in your eye because of such things as Corporal Gregory being there. Don't you dare lock that child in there. Even though we all know that's what happens. And if, if Lynette yells and screams at this child with sheriff deputies there all the time, with wildlife officers there all the time, can you imagine what is happening when they're not there? Well, you don't have to imagine. If you're a resident of Otter Creek, you can hear it all. You can witness it all. They all hear it, they all witness it, and nobody should ever be okay with this. So what court case is this? Point number 42 out of 80 in this lawsuit. Um, the August 8th, court entered an order directing the petitioner provide a written response because of the court's concerns. Now, I'm going to guess this is in regards to the biological ants. Now, I'm going to guess that because the biological ants have kept me in the loop. And at the same time, I've given them the information and evidence that they need for the courts as well. And so they are concerned for this child. I am concerned for this child. Do you think this man who wrote this, if you can even call him a man, is concerned for this child? I don't think so. Not at all. And that's pathetic. That's cowardly. The very first thing that somebody should be concerned of is not, hey, I'm going to get you millions. The very first thing this individual should be concerned about is the health and safety of this child. Now, we already know their side is concerned for the health and safety of this child. Shard has been very vocal about it in private communications with others to the point where she had to voluntarily dismiss herself from this case as if Shart was ever a part of a case in her entire life. She's done nothing healthy for anyone. She is a grifter. She is a coattail rider trying to find fame for others when she knows unashamedly, and that's what concerns me the most, she knows this child is in danger. And she, what does she do? Nothing. He knows this child is in danger. And what does he do? Nothing. Promises millions to somebody. Allegedly. Do you really think saying allegedly protects you from defamation, slander, libel? No, it doesn't. Once it's said, it's said. Once it's out there, it's out there. Now, how can I say that he's promising her millions? Because Lynette has publicly stated that she has a multi-million dollar or million dollar case against me. Now, how can she say that? Because her lawyer told her that he would be the only one who could state that to her. And she's publicly sharing it with others. Therefore, it would not be defamation. Therefore, it wouldn't be libel, slander, or anything along those lines. It would be repeating exactly what Lynette has said. Which is all that we've done this entire time anyway. There are those who have said, Jeremy, your language, the things you said to Crook, was repeating what Crook said to me. 
So how is it that the Crook supporters and the Lynette supporters are okay with what Crook has said and done to me and George, but they're not okay if I say and do the same things back to him, which I've never done the same things back to him. But I have repeated his language back to him. Don't you think that's um, hypocritical at a bare minimum? Yeah, I'd say so as well. On September 3rd, this is point 43 of 80 points, 2024, attorney... Kaswenga filed the ordered response in which acknowledged that DCF had been contacted numerous times with no action taken and justifying the following by claiming that the petitioner believes that the Department of Children and Family Services considers these calls as hoaxes or bids for public attention. That's what concerns me the most. That Levy County, whether it be the Sheriff Department, whether it be the courthouse, whether it be the attorney and general, whether it be this, it, it, this is just insanity. DCF going, this is all for views on YouTube. None of this is views for our YouTube. If the camera outside of the courthouse picks something up, is it done for views for YouTube? If the officer's cameras pick something up, is it done for YouTube? No, it's done because it's happening. It's reality. If I turn the camera on, it's not for YouTube. It may be on YouTube for my own safety and protection and accountability, but it has nothing to do with YouTube. I much rather be recording treasure hunting and living my beautiful life in my beautiful home with my beautiful birds, with beautiful friends and family such as yourself watching. The ridiculousness of children's services stating or claiming that this is done for content, for... Is that what news is then? Does the news on... A, is that how TV ended up? Did they, they literally go to TV when TV first started and went, This is just done for views on TV! This isn't real as they're reporting the news. I mean, how absurd. Hurricane never happened, right? We have over a hundred lives so far confirmed taken from this past hurricane never happened because it was all over youtube it was done for content i mean is lynette now going to say that i have control over the weather is lynette going to say that i have control over the planet and the weather now do i have control over god i mean heaven forbid i'm so thankful god is sovereign if you don't know what sovereign means it means control god is in control of all things all people all places all time god is in control of everything and while i don't know what the ultimate outcome is going to be i have faith and i place my hope in knowing that he does whether that being for me for george for the child for anybody god is the one that's in control of the weather God's the one in control of all things. He is sovereign over those things. Not Judge Greg DeThomas's, though he would want you to think that he is. Not lawyers on YouTube who call themselves gods. They are far from that as they could ever be. So we have justifying filing the claim the petitioner believes that the Department of Children and Family Service considers these calls as hoaxes or bids for public attention. I think it's actually pathetic. As a matter of fact, I've seen the main investigator in Walmart. I recorded her. As, ah, who do you think she's related to? Oh, that's right. She was related to a council member in, yeah, Levy County. Huh. And who do you think they're all buddy-buddy with? That's right, the Meeks. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm not even going to, I'm just going to. I'm going to show it to you. This is the lady that's in charge of DCF investigations, married to Tim Hodge, commissioner, and isn't doing anything to save a child in Otter Creek. I've worked there a long time, and I do save children. I've worked there a long time, but I do save children. Just probably not all of them, huh? Considering this is completely and totally swept under the rug. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Now, what are they going to say? Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy filmed her for content. I filmed her for accountability. She is doing absolutely nothing to protect this child in Levy County. This would never, ever be okay anywhere else. Number 44, Attorney Consuega. I'm not saying her name right, but that's okay because I don't want to say it right. Knew from her experience as a family law practitioner that no standing existed for the aunt or anyone else to attempt to access the adoption file. Well, let's just stop right there. If there was no standing to access the adoption file, then uh, why is the court giving the opportunity to do that? Hmm. 
pretty big standing when you have the biological mother, you have the biological father, the father who never signed any adoption paperwork or his rights away in the first place when this Facebook adoption happened, who's now saying, I want these adoption records unsealed. I never gave any permission. I never gave my rights away. I'd say that's a pretty strong standing. A father, a biological father who never gave his rights away and somehow his daughter was allegedly adopted out to some psychotic woman and some psychotic man through Facebook contact. Insanity. Or anyone else to attempt to access the adoption file that and that Miss Nelson's status as the sister of the birth father who gave up HG for adoption had no more cousinable interest in the adoption by virtue of the re relation than any stranger. You mean the same biological mother who wrote on the paper from her own testimony, I have not seen the paper, it's sealed, it's being unsealed, hopefully, I haven't heard the latest update yet, who literally wrote in documentation she did not want to sign her name. She was being forced. All right. Um, pile of poo. I mean, this paper is basically only good for one thing, cleaning a backside. Anybody got a bucket? I got to go. I got, I got my paper ready. Okay. Number 45. Look at us rolling now. We're already at 45 out of 80. And we still haven't heard about the defendants being on the property or any damages whatsoever. The attorney filed the petition purposefully without taking any steps to learn the identity of Miss Preston's adoption lawyer for purposes of search. By the way, the identity of Lynette's adoption lawyer is some kind of animal lawyer. Oh, there's a lot there that we could dig into and we could show as well. I'm not even going to go there right now. Oh, there's a ton. It's just, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing that any judge ever allowed this to happen. And the only way I can figure this ever got through the system is because of COVID. That's the only way I can figure anything ever happened. All right, lawyer, for purposes of serving a copy of the petition so there would be no interference with the emergency removal proceeding. Hales, here we go, Hales, not even a part of the lawsuit. Hales again. Here we are. We're back to Jeremy Hales. Hales was informing his audience that was taking place. It's still taking place. I'm not informing anybody. I have no control over who watches. I have no control over who listens. As a matter of fact, I have no control over what anything that happens. YouTube is a platform. I place it on there for accountability and I place it on there for protection and place it on there for a video uh, recording a diary or news story of my life, what has happened. It's not for an audience. It's for me. It's for protection, accountability. I, it's, if somebody watches, that's great. I can't force anybody to watch. Obviously, he is. <laughs> Thanks for the view. So, the adoption lawyer, for purpose of serving the copy of the petition, so there would be no interference with the emergency removal proceeding. Hales was informing his audience was taking place. She could have easily contacted any number of persons to try and learn the identity of the adoption council to serve a copy of the petition. There's a lot of things that could easily be done. For example, this could easily just be dismissed out of court because it's a bunch of garbage. This could easily be useful as Tinder, lighter starter for a campfire, because it ain't going to do anything to help Lynette. Not a thing whatsoever. So basically what he's saying is the aunt's lawyer didn't contact Lynette's lawyer, nor did she have to. Why would she? All of this ridiculous garbage going through the system Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. We're on page 9 of 14, number 46. Still nothing in regards to the actual defendants. The attorney conducted no investigation whatsoever to determine the veracity of any information from Miss Nielsen, despite that it would have been simple to contact any number of persons given the entire matter was being covered on YouTube and contact information of those with knowledge was easily available. There you go. Bum, bum, bum. This is all about the ants. All about the ants who are not listed as defendants in this lawsuit. So they're stating that Lynette's lawyer for the adoption was never contacted by the ants lawyer about the emergency removal. Why would you? You don't have to. You know what's not appropriate? This lawyer contacting 
my forensic handwriting expert, who is a true forensic handwriting expert. Not a joke. Not somebody who has been dismissed multiple times from federal cases being noted as not a forensic handwriting expert. My forensic handwriting expert is actually a professional in the field, not a charlatan as his forensic handwriting expert has been called multiple times as he's been dismissed from case of case and case and case. Boy, boy, you can't call an expert an expert with the background and criminal history that these individuals are going to try and bring into this case, which again, all I can say is thank you. Oh my goodness. Making my job, making life so much easier and better for me. I mean, it doesn't get much better than a bunch of fools getting together, doing foolish things in front of a wise judge. This is a slam dunk any way you look at it. And every time you think they're not going to do something more stupid than they did before, what do they do? Something incredibly stupid from what they did before. Number 47, when the judge informed the aunt's attorney that she would need to provide a valid basis for accessing the adoption file for the aunt. The attorney for, for financial remuneration signed and filed a frivolous, oh, now we're getting frivolous. This is funny, filed a frivolous response. This is what frivolous is. This is frivolous. And now this lawyer is stating that the aunt's attorney filed a frivolous response. That's odd because he doesn't get to determine what's frivolous. I don't even get to determine what's frivolous, regardless of how much power and control they say I have over people and places and things. I wish I did at times. Actually, I had to be too much power and control. I actually, I don't want it. You know what I really want? I just want to be left alone to live in the woods. That's it. I tell George all the time. You know what? I could be just happy with never seeing another human being again, just hanging out with you in the woods. That's where I find my happy place. I'm cool with it. And I would be thrilled, thrilled to just live life out happily in the woods, treasure hunting. So frivolous response in which she purported to argue that the aunt had some legal uh, interest in standing to access the adoption. Well, Obviously, the ants do. They've adopted other siblings, and they actually want to see the siblings with another sibling, the child, in a healthy, growing environment. Not an environment of neglect, not an environment of abuse, a growing environment where a child is actually nurtured and raised. A child is actually corrected in the appropriate ways, not screamed at, yelled at all day, not hearing foul language all day, yelling and screaming, not around a runk all day, not around rug addicts all day or rug dealers all day. Not, or, I mean, could, could, you get where I'm going, right? You get where I'm going. Uh, the insanity that this child has been placed in and it, the insanity that it all started with a Facebook adoption during COVID is just mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. All right, let's keep going. Number 48, on information and belief that the aunt paid the attorney with a portion of funds raised in a GoFundMe campaign to save HG and likely retain some of the funds for her own use. Oh, so now, now, 48, right there. Look at this. We got a lawyer saying defamatory things about the aunt's. In other words, what are you saying? The aunt stole the money that was given to the lawyer to unseal the adoption records for the emergency removal. He is now claiming the aunt stole money. That's funny because they are also claiming that side of things, that the entire GoFundMe was wrong. Everybody got their money back. So which is it? Everybody got their money refunded, which never happened. Or the aunt stole money, which never happened. The lawyer has the money. I mean, the, the how, why, why get yourself in a deeper, deeper hole? But what do they keep doing? Digging, digging, digging. Man, how deep is this hole going to go for Limenet? This guy is not helping her at all. This guy is probably the worst thing to happen to her thus far through all of this. She is a nutcase all on her own. But you put another unhinged individual with another unhinged individual. What do you get? You got multiple on it's synergy of unhingedness it's synergy of obsession and stalking it's synergy of all this illegal activity 
Number 49, all defendants knew of and were complicit in the Hales. Finally, point 49. Point 49, all defendants. We are finally, not by name, but we are at least getting to the defendants. 49, all defendants. It took us 49 points to even get to a real defendant. Not that this is a real case, but 49. We're finally, can you believe this? Can you believe this? We are finally at a defendant. All defendants knew of and were complicit in Hale's scheme to create a sensational Content generating, high interest storyline for YouTube content centered on saving HG. All right, so point 49. All defendants knew of and were complicit in the Hale scheme to create a sensational content generating, a high intensity storyline for YouTube content. Well, then what is it that this lawyer is involved in right now? Well, he obviously is been online as well and not helping Lynette at all. Not helping HG at all. Not helping Crook at all. What has he been trying to do? Wait, see, let's read this again. Um, he's been trying to create a sensational content generating high interest storyline for YouTube content for his own promotion. Because he's been a nobody his entire life. He wants more than anything to be a somebody. And, like most, he can't do it on his own. So what does he have to do? He's got to try and jump on the coattails of somebody else. And he doesn't care if he's on the wrong side of it. He just wants it. He craves it. He obsesses over it. And so do many others. And what happens in their lives? They fail. You can't get and reach success off of somebody else's back, somebody else's coattails, somebody else's, we could go on and on and on, right? Somebody else's money, somebody else's promotion, somebody else's. If you ain't got it, you ain't got it. It ain't gonna happen. Now, don't get me wrong. You may get a temporary spike of some people watching, some people viewing, but frankly, vast majority of those people viewing are going to be people who are on the right side that are just reporting back what's happened anyway with timestamps, screenshots, and all the information needed for court against them. It's very short-lived. If you want long-term success, it doesn't happen overnight. If you want long-term success, it's tons and tons of hard work. And this is what this individual is doing. Exactly. This is called projection. You understand that, right? In the psychology world, this is called projection. He is projecting on me what he's actually doing all over YouTube. All over YouTube. How funny is it that he's going, how dare Jeremy be on YouTube doing all this when he's on YouTube doing all this? Isn't that funny? When he's going, how dare they use pictures? And he's on YouTube sharing pictures with other channels. Well, you don't think that's going to come up in court? You're submitting content, information, what to say, pictures to show. In other words, complete and total control over what some people are saying. You don't think that's going to show up? Oh, Jeremy can't do this. Oh, but if you say this and you show this, you can do this. Oh, boy. What do you think the judge is going to say? Oh, my goodness. Number 50. We just saw all the defendants. We didn't see anybody named. We didn't see any damages whatsoever. But we're finally at number 50 of 80. The entire set of events. The property invasion. There was no invasion. There was absolutely no invasion whatsoever. If Lloyd wasn't a legal tenant, which she was, if Lynette would stop bringing people onto the property, which she hasn't, then there would be no situation, no event whatsoever. You think anybody has learned from this yet? I mean, Lynette brings Jamster on the property with a stolen camper. Jamster turns on her. Lynette brings rug addicts on the property, living in her shed. They turn on her. Everybody who has been on that property has turned on her because they find out real quick who she really is and what she's really about. She is unhinged, psychotic, and very dangerous. And so is Crook. So we have the entire set of events, the property invasion. No such thing ever happened. It was legal to remove Lloyd's property from that turd purgatory. The taking of the RV, the false CPS. Re okay, so the taking of the RV. There's no taking. It's Lloyd's. It's called removing. 
Did it get taken from Shady Oaks when it got moved over to Turd Purgatory? No, because it's Lloyd's. He owns it. He can do what he wants with it. So the taking of the RV, it's Lloyd's. It's his property. He can do whatever he wants with it. It's called removal of property. All right, so the property invasion, the taking of the RV, the false CPS report. They can't be false if CPS hasn't said they're false. Obviously, they're not false. There's obviously a case plan in action, in place. When we continue to see here, and there's been nothing found and nothing done, he has no knowledge whatsoever. CPS isn't going to share anything with him any more than they would share with me or any more than they would share with anybody else. It's confidential information with a minor. I guarantee you there is no... You know what? I shouldn't be guaranteeing. Because I've been so shocked, horrifically uh, disturbed by the lack of of accountability and the lack of responsibility of CPS, which isn't even CPS, it's DCF in Florida, of what they should have done and and they've done nothing. So where I tell you there's got to be a case plan, I tell you there's got to be a case plan based on bits and pieces that LineNet has stated publicly, whether it be in written form, whether it be in video form, because I can see the aspect of case plan working with CPS so often as I worked with hundreds of thousands of kids from all over the United States. And even had, I even had kids from uh, other countries that I worked with in a Christian camping and conference center. And I had to work with CPS a lot and with families a lot and in the counseling environment a lot. So this isn't something that's not new to me. I see the bits and pieces as Lynette reveals information, uh, but I don't have the information. I would be completely and totally shocked if they, at a minimum, did not put a case plan. The property invasion, the taking of the RV, the false CPS reports, which none have been named or claimed as false by CPS. Just because he says it doesn't mean it. It's false. Or fraudulent. You know, Lynette keeps saying that my civil protection order in Ohio is fraudulent. And yet, it still exists. Because the evidence was there. And just because he says that these uh, CPS calls were false doesn't make them false. The involvement of a family law attorney to file something in court to lend a kernel of truth for Hales to claim there was an emergency removal proceeding in progress. There is. Just because he doesn't have all the information doesn't mean it's not happening. Was part of a common scheme in which all defendants willingly participated. Okay, so now we're getting back to the defendants right there at the bottom. We're getting back to the actual defendants. So, it's Jeremy. He's in control of all the defendants. And they took Lloyd's camper. And now we're going to sue the defendants. But we're not going to sue Jeremy, who apparently is the puppet master. Or Lloyd, who's the owner. How foolish is this? The scheme in which all defendants will aim willingly participated. The scheme that they uh, participated in, number one, wasn't a scheme. It was to help a man who cried out for help. It's that simple. That's what decent human beings do. That's what neighbors do. Neighbors don't stalk. They don't extort. They don't put signs up around the town calling people rapist, stating that they have done things, inexplicable things to children trying to destroy their entire character, trying to destroy their entire reputation. This will come back on her. All right. We're finally getting to something. Count one. Finally. Count one. Here's what we got. Count one, the conversion. 51, the defendant's act in taking the RV from Miss Preston's property was unauthorized by Miss Preston. Do you see that? Count one. 50. 51. Unauthorized by Miss Preston. How many times did you hear in the actual Levy County Corporal Gregory's video, his audio, where Lynette said that Lloyd can take his camper? How many times did she confirm that the camper was Lloyd's? How many times did she say Lloyd could take the camper? 
She said, nobody can come on this property, which he said, he's a tenant. He legally lives here. He can have anybody on his property that he wants. Once he's gone, he's gone. How many times have we heard Lynette say it was Lloyd's camper? How many times did we hear Lynette say, take it? He can take it. He's got to bring in another crew. He can take it. He can get his camper. How many times? Over and over and over. Number 51. Miss Preston's property was unauthorized. Can you imagine a judge reading this and watching and listening to the video? Number 52. I mean, this is the biggest joke in the world. Number 52. The defendant's removal of the RV deprived Miss Preston of her property in that she had already paid a significant portion of the purchase price and had the right to complete the purchase. She paid? Hold a second. This is the same woman who's stealing from the government on Lloyd's government cards. Literally, she's committing felonies on Lloyd's government cards. She owes Lloyd money because Lloyd gave her money to pay for the electric. Lloyd gave her money to pay for her pills. Lloyd gave her money for her groceries. Lloyd gave her... She still owes Lloyd money to this day. And somehow he's going to claim that there was some kind of paid contract? Well, I would assume there are receipts to that, right? I would assume there is a contract in writing. Except there isn't. No contract in writing. No receipts whatsoever. And she still owes money to Lloyd as she was stealing also a felony from the government on his cards. Now, I get it that Lloyd said, hey, you can use these. That's not okay. And Lloyd may not have been knowledgeable that that was a, an actual act and a crime. The fact that she did it still implicates her. Wow, all the money that she gave Lloyd. What money? There is, she has an indigent status on these. She's claiming she has no money, she can't pay for anything. She's telling the sheriff deputies she doesn't even know where her next meal is going to come from. One GoFundMe after another GoFundMe after another GoFundMe. Just get a freaking job. They're free. Now, you have a responsibility of actually completing the responsibilities of that job to get paid for it. But that's the freest thing out there. People are looking for individuals to help. Oh, wait, wait. She says she can't get a job because she's disabled. Now, there are some of you who misinterpret me when I say if you're disabled, you can't get a job. I'm quoting Lynette. I'm not talking about your particular situation. So get out of your own head. Get out of your own mind. What the hell's ain't about you? This is about Lynette and my life right now. Lynette claims that she can't work because she's disabled. The same Lynette who then said she was going to become the new clerk of the town of Otter Creek. The same Lynette who put in her paperwork to become a clerk for the town of Otter Creek. The same Lynette who submitted her paperwork to become a council member for the town of Otter Creek. The exact same Lynette who says she cannot work. She's disabled. She can't do anything. She's disabled. Therefore, I owe her money. Therefore, you owe her money. Therefore, organizations, government, everybody owes her something. I can't stand these type of people who just take and take and take and take and take. I cannot stand these type of people who think that everybody owes them something in life. It's sick. And yet, that's who she is. Number 53, Miss Preston had ownership interest in the RV pursuant to her contract with Campbell. Excuse me? What contract? Stating that there's a contract with Lloyd. What we have is a bunch of text messages. Lloyd, can I buy the camper? No, stay out of my camper. Lloyd, I want to give you $200 a month. No, don't you go in my camper. And over and over and over. And yet there is some kind of ownership interest? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I don't think a judge would ever think so. Or a jury or anybody with a rational brain. She has an ownership interest in the RV pursuant to her contract with Campbell. What is this? We're finally getting to defendants. Uh, I think we're claiming damages. I mean, this isn't exactly what I would claim as a damage by any stretch of a legal imagination. Uh, we had 50 points to get to here. She's stating she had a contract with Lloyd, but now she doesn't have a camper. And she's not suing Lloyd! We're still not at any damages 
with these defendants. 54, the removal of the RV from her property and the resultant depri deprivation it was against Miss Preston's ownership interest. She had no inter interest whatsoever. She told Lloyd she, he'd get his camper off of her property. She acknowledges that it's Lloyd's camper, not her camper. She begs to buy it. She will not be... She's, she's illegally living on the property right now in a shed and another camper. They are illegally on the property. And I can go through every aspect of that ill... Ill legality right now. Try and say that five times fast. But I'm in the process of trying to uh, correct that remedy within the county, and therefore we're not going to show all the cards right now. But what I will share with you is all of her permits are expired. She's illegally on the property, and it's illegal to live in a shed, and it's illegal to live on a camper on that piece of property right now. They are illegally on that property with a child. If that's not enough for DCF to get involved and remove this child, what it will be? How about that? I'm going to spank you in the mouth. How about the constant? You know, there's been so much. Here we go. Number 55. We're finally at a defendant. Defendant Willis received a letter from Miss Preston's counsel on August 24, 2024, informing him of Miss Preston's claim to the RV and warning him to preserve it as he had aired a video on his YouTube channel promoting a fundraiser to purchase the RV from Lloyd for a donation to a veteran. Who cares? So this joke of a lawyer sent Willis a letter and said, if you don't give that RV back, we're going to sue you. Who cares? It's not Lynette's. It's Lloyd's. Lynette is recorded so many times acknowledging that it's Lloyd's. The text messages prove that it's Lloyd's. The text messages prove that it's not going to be sold to her whatsoever. The text messages, the conversations, it all proves. It has nothing of ownership or any type of, any type of, let's see, the, um, what, what does he call this? It was ownership interest of Lynette. Hmm. So Lloyd flies up to go live with his daughter, which he is doing extremely well, and he's very, very happy, and the family is very happy. And... The camper stays behind. Now, how did I get involved in this? Well, they were going to protect and save Lloyd. They needed a place to put the camper. Where I said, yes, Lloyd can put the camper on my property temporarily. Because it can only be on my property for two weeks. That's the law in Levy County. And it has to be on the property in a certain way. And it was gone within the two weeks. That's how I got involved. Where it could be on the actual property. And now it's blessing another veteran, which Lloyd is. And I would assume he's extremely happy about that. Number 57, as a result of the conversation of the RV by the defendants, of the conversion of the RV by the defendants, Lynette has suffered damages. What damages? So there's no damages listed whatsoever. So Lloyd takes his, basically what this says, Lloyd took his RV and left. And now Lynette is damaged because of it. Lynette was freaking damaged well before Lloyd's camper was removed. No damages listed whatsoever. All right, count two, evasion of privacy. Let's just, we'll dig into this. Count two, invasion of privacy. Intrusion! All defendants knew they were entering Miss Preston's property on the pretext for the purpose of wandering around, videoing the property condition and the clutter to broadcast such Wait, hold a second. You're telling me this lawyer who is so concerned for HG is now actually admitting that the property condition is bad? He's admitting, and yet he's doing nothing for this child. To video footage in conjunction with what the hails fabricated, save HG storyline for what the hails. He's literally admitting that there's a problem with the property. His own writing admits there's a problem. Man, I can't wait to get this guy in a room. Oh, I can't wait to. This guy is fool. This guy is dumb. Dumb. I mean, jeez. So when I had Silver Scam, and I'm still, I'll play the deposition eventually. When I had Silver Scam in the deposition, which Silver Scam, he tries to be so stoic. He's got little man syndrome. I'm big. He's very small. So stoic. Boy, it, it did not go well for Silver Scam. Uh, I would assume that uh, Silver Scam is much more professional than this dude. 
Uh, I wouldn't even call him a dude. I would call him a deuce. And um, and it's going to be fun for me. I can promise you that. I, I will share with you that my lawyers were laughing, were belly over laughing during my deposition with Silver Scam. I can only imagine what's going to happen once we get into this deposition for federal court, which I literally can't wait for. It's, it's, it's something I'm looking forward to, this deposition with him, because it's going to, it's going to be fun. Hashtag! Um, all defendants intruded on Miss Preston's property and privacy by entering pretextual reasons and then wandering around and videoing. Seems to me what they did is they went in and they got Lloyd's property and removed it. Number 60, as a result of the invasion of her privacy, that Linet and HGF suffered damages. Yet again, we're at 60 and we have no damages. What? What? What did they suffer? Seems to me what they're suffering is the damages of this deuce. That's what they're suffering. Damages that are going to come with countersuits. Damages that are going to come with legal fees that she'll never be able to pay. She will have liens on everything. She will lose everything. And he will walk away because he has no financial... Well, actually, he will. We'll get to that later. Count three. Invasion of privacy, publication of private information. What private information? Linus paste, posted this stuff everywhere. Pasted, posted. Number 61, all defendants knew that the purpose of the pretextual to entry Miss Linus property was to obtain video footage of her property. Wrong. Number 62, they could do that from outside of the road. If they wanted video footage of the property, they could do that from the Hudson sisters' property, from the property behind the property. They could go on all aspects of the property and video. They don't have to be on the property to video the property. So this is a ridiculous joke. Number 62, all defendants knew and intended for the video footage was to be broadcast on What the Hales, Madam Mayor Ventures, YouTube channels that regularly rebroadcasted content from What the Hales related to the bad neighbors. Fake reality tar storyline. This is a fake reality. Oxymoron much? Well, definite emphasis on the moron on this guy. Number 63, the video footage depicted private areas. Really? Private areas now? No, no spots? Really? The footage depicted private areas and revealed private information that reasonable person would not want publicized and was not a matter of public interest. Hmm. Wrong. Number 64, as a result of the broadcast video footage depicting Lynette's property and her public revealing private information, Miss Preston suffered damages. What damages? He has yet to list any damages. Why? Because there are none. This woman was damaged well before this. Count four now for damages. Again, we still hear nothing about what the actual defendants did. They came in and they were videoing for their own safety and their own protection. They actually had a sheriff there as well for their own safety and their own protection. And they got everything out as fast as possible for their own safety and their own protection. And then they left and they never came back for their own safety and their own protection. Count four, civil conspiracy. Dun, dun, dun. 65, the defendants conspired to enter Miss Preston's property on the pretext of retrieving Lloyd's RV but for ulterior unlawful purposes. Might make sense if you actually uh, figure out what those unlawful purposes are. Oh wait, you can't, because there weren't any. 66, the defendants conspired to invade Miss Preston's privacy and video Lynette's property for the purpose of, how many times are we gonna hear the same thing? They conspired to video her property for the purpose of broadcasting it. They didn't have to. They literally didn't have to. There's enough already from the sheriff and from the wildlife officers. Same thing, same thing, 67 as a result, unlawful acts, overt actions, furtherance of the conspiracy. All defendants are liable for damages to Miss Preston. What damages? We still have not heard one single damages. All right, and the evasion of her property and broadcast footage taken during the invasion. Count five, in intentional infliction of emotional distress. Number 68, the actions of defendants were extreme and outrageous. Extreme and outrageous. You know what I think is extreme and outrageous? Lynette screaming and yelling at a sheriff. Lynette screaming and yelling at these individuals. Lynette screaming and yelling at the child. Lynette screaming and yelling at anybody and everybody. Lynette locking a child unlawfully within a camper. Lynette doing so many unlawful things, such as putting signs up around town, calling people rapists from Ohio. Lynette, 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 crook, 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 crook. We could go on and on and on and on. You know, the funny thing is people who actually don't like Lynette and crook think this is the biggest joke as well. That do like, I'm sorry, 
that do like them think that this is the biggest joke in the world as well. The Ashams, the defendants, were intentional. Yeah, they went in intentionally to go retrieve all of Lloyd Campbell's uh, property. The defendants knew and should have known their actions would cause a reasonable person to suffer emotional distress. What? Was there anxiety over the roof? Did she start chewing on Tylenol? Oh, wait. That wasn't a Tylenol in her mouth. The plaintiff suffered severe emotional distress as a result of the actions. Screaming and yelling didn't seem like emotional distress to me. Including resulting CPS calls by people who saw the video footage. Yeah, well, they have every right to call CPS. So do you. Everybody does. You see something, you have every legal right to say something. Which is most concerning, this law, LOL, or hasn't called. If he's seen all this and he hasn't called, boy, I hope they hold him accountable for if something happens to this child. Including the resulting CPS calls by people who saw the video footage of the property. And it just goes on. False reports, all ridiculous. 72, the plaintiff suffered severe emotional distress as a result of being terrified. Anybody see Lynette terrified? I don't. I see her saying she'll pop cap in anybody's backside. I see her flaunting a, a firearm around everywhere she goes. I see her screaming and yelling at anyone and everyone. I see her running, literally running out to the road for Channel 20. Running. Please, please, please come film me. On her property. Oh, did Channel 20 come in and cause emotional distress because they showed the poor conditions of the property? Where's Channel 20 in this as a defendant? All right. Count six versus Deputy Gregory, 73, all relevant times, Defendant Gregory was acting under the color of law. Now we're actually getting to a defendant, which is Deputy Gregory, which is Corporal. Defendant Gregory could have notified Miss Preston in advance. Yeah, actually, Chief Beecham, Under Sheriff Beecham could have notified her because he was the one that was scheduled to be out there. It was him who scheduled it with Brett. And then, like a coward, he went and sent Gregory. Defendant Gregory could have notified Miss Preston. And Lynette claims to be really, really close with Beecham. Why didn't he notify her? Beecham, no, Gregory, could have notified Preston in advance that Lloyd wished to retrieve his property. He did. He notified her and said Lloyd wants to retrieve his property. He, she got notified when Gregory notified her. There's no law that says you have to be notified at any particular point in time. She got notified. Hey, Lloyd wants his property. Lloyd could have came in on the property, could have been released from rehab, walked in on the property and said, I'm taking everything and I'm leaving. No Gregory had to be there, but he was. Without an announced invasion, 75, Defendant Gregory used his authority to force Miss Preston, she was never forced into anything, to endure an invasion of her property, peace, tranquility, by five hostile individuals. Actually, I think these individuals were very calm, very polite. And did everything that they could to get in and out and help an individual in need as fast as possible. As they feared for their life from this female. If you can even call her that. Defender Gregory knew the other defendants were using the retrieval of Lloyd's RV and property as a pretext to gain access. I'm so sick and tired of reading the same thing over and over. It's ridiculous. 77. Gregory's presence and unilateral permitting of the defendants to invade Preston's property under his guard constituted an unreasonable seizure. Wrong. 78, Defendant Gregory knew that other defendants had no right to enter Preston's property. In fact, issued trespass citations. Actually, he illegally gave trespass citations. You can't be trespassed unless you're actually on the property. So he told them, hey, can, you, can I give you a warning? Can I get you something paperwork afterward? They weren't on the property. In the state of Florida, you can't be trespassed unless you're caught on the property. And so they weren't even on the property. They were given a warning that if they go on the property again, they're going to be trespassed. All right, let's keep going. Number 79, Defendant Gregory violated 42 U.S.C. 1983 by depriving Ms. Preston of her rights under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution to be free from unreasonable search and seizure. She was never searched and she was never seizured. Lloyd's property was gotten. And Defendant Gregory's conduct was actual cause of harm for Ms. Preston. Right there. Number 80. We got through it. How do you think Levy County Sheriff... How do you think Corporal Gregory? How do you think Beecham? How do you think any of these individuals are going to feel about Lynette now that this joke of a lawyer is involved? He's not helping her. 
He's hurting her in worse ways than she's ever been hurt before. As a matter of fact, she should be suing him for damages. What lawyer unethically and illegally signs the name of another lawyer? You see the name here? Scott R. in the stamp. You see the signature underneath? Scott S. Hold a second. Are you trying to tell me that Scott doesn't even know his middle initial? Is he confused like Lynette's confused with all of her names? No. This is Deuce illegally drafting motions, lawsuits, and then slapping the name of another lawyer on it. That's how unprofessional, that's how ridiculous this guy is.